Commence primary ignition. I'm just not the, the hero type, clearly. What a piece of junk. Enterprise, this is the captain. I got a bad feeling about this. It's all part of the plan. Engage. Welcome back to Podcast Super One. I'm your host, Donovan Thompson, with my co-host, Daniel Wingfield. And today we are talking Dune, directed by Dini Villeneuve. Yes. Yeah, Dennis. I think it's how you... Is it... You, you Dennis? Don't, you don't, is it... Well, it's think, spelled I think Dennis, it's, isn't uh, it? It's spelled Dennis, but I think it's Denny. I don't know. No, anyway. well, it's, it's only got one in, so you're probably right. Yeah, Denny, Denny, Denny. All right, guys, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, that notification bell. That way you're up to date on all future episodes of Podcast Super One, as well as check out the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash two for one studios, the best place to consume the content. And don't forget, we are on all podcast services, Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of them. I don't know. And of course, if you didn't know, we are sponsored by Kapow Comics, located at 4047 East Kill Avenue in Sherwood, Arkansas. There they have comic books, collectibles, graphic novels, and of course, special guest appearances throughout the year. Kapow. Kapow. Kablam. It's that's not Kablam Comics. That's the, that's the <laughs> But it could, like, I, I, it could easily just as easily be Kablam Comics. Could it it not? could. It, it could like, be Kablam Comics. Like in an alternate universe, but it's the exact same story. I would love it if they like worlds collided at some point. Um, <laughs> yeah, that'll be again, the one we Daniel, open up someday. Yeah, I know. Again, um, we are here talking about Dune. This movie was supposed to come out a long time ago, but of course, like everything yeah. this year, it has been um, coming out now at one particular time. Apparently, November, October, December is like the uh, the busiest movie season of all time. And um, we're a little behind talking about it, but it's just the nature of, of the business and nature of uh, schedules. But we well, are know, talking this about way, a- this way we gave everyone time to watch it. Sure. Right? Yeah, like, that's why. That's like why we people really weren't. A lot of people probably didn't watch it day one. Yeah, you know, you did, but I didn't. Um, so, you know, that's what we, we're just kind of waiting, never, waiting for everybody to catch up before we talk. Yeah. about it. We didn't want to, you know, you know, you don't want to you don't want to arrive too early. You know, you never want to be too early. That's right. Um, early mouse gets the cheese. Nope, second nope, mouse. Nope, 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 that's not it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I just don't like what you're going it's there. A, so. It's a it's a quote from Iron Man three, and I can't remember it right now. Oh, really? Anyway, yeah, it's a quote from Iron Man three. Aldridge like Killian says it to Pepper Potts, quoting his father. Anyway, I'll I'll think I'll remember by the end of the, the podcast. We're here talking Dune, and if you didn't know, this is a uh, based off a really old book. Jesus, what's that guy's name? Um, Frank Herbert. Frank Herbert wrote this thing in 1965. Um, and of course, it spawned like inspiration for tons of sci-fi things that we see today. And I know one of the big ones that people say a lot in the trades and just in general knowledge is that Star Wars has taken a lot of different themes and even maybe potential plot-like devices that are from this series and incorporated them, incorporated them into Star Wars and we love Star Wars, so maybe we might love Dune. So, Daniel, real yeah. quick, this is a, what, a two hour and 40 minute movie. It is. How did you feel about it? Did you like Dune? I loved it. I thought it was really, really fantastic. Now, it's definitely not, <laughs> to me, it's like the antithesis to J.J. Abrams sci fi in this, in this weird way of like, sure. J.J. Abrams sci fi is just like, it's flashy. It's in your face. It's just like uh, it's usually the story is really quick and you get to where, you know, like the action quickly. There's lots of action. There's lots of like uh, just it's it feels more like, I guess, maybe your classical blockbuster Hollywood. I think of like Star Trek, the Star Trek series he did. Um, this to me feels like the Arturs sci fi. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Like I, it really does. It feels like um it's just this kind of like mystically magical world because it it is sci-fi but it has so many elements that are one recognizable for us in just our world but also just feel more tribal i would say and feel more like um it's not like everyone's using um you know like uh touch pads and computer screens or holograms or lightsaber you know what i mean it's like they're using swords you know what I mean? Like some people have weapons, but they're more like missiles. You know what I mean? It's not like, uh, you know, 
X wings and Tie fighters and stuff like that. And I feel like the cinematography in this movie is just, I think, jaw dropping at times. I think. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't. Do you know if this was more of a CGI or if they shot? I mean, I'm assuming they could just go to a desert and do a lot of this, you know, on location for a lot of it. Um, I don't. I don't know. I. I don't know. Actually, I. I, yeah. I would be able to speak on it. I. I would assume that a lot of it's on location, just by how easily accessible deserts are. You'd think that would be, you know, more of a uh, way yeah. to go. But potentially, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Maybe. Um, but yeah, man, the, the cinematography is great. The performances are amazing. I was kind of surprised how many key at, like well-known actors die, how early they die, I guess. Yeah, for sure. Um, but I also like that. I think that makes their performances almost stand out more for me because they just had so little, they had relatively little screen time, but actually made an impact. I think especially yeah. Oscar Isaac was fantastic. I really yeah. liked him um Stellan Skarsgård which I guess he's not dead but like man he was a great creepy bad guy oh man um Javier Bardem was I loved him showing up kind of late yes. into the movie uh and he was just a fantastic kind of person in that role he but it didn't it just felt very um true to him and like I don't know it worked really well for me but yeah I mean I thought this movie was fantastic it's a slow burn at times I think and I think I would understand why some people might bounce off it or just like come into it with the wrong expectations for the kind of movie they're, they're getting into, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, but man, yeah, I think, so I'm really, really excited for the next one. I think, I don't know. I'm, 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 I, I wanted to see this movie. Obviously I, I had like, I wanted to, you know, I desired to see it, but like after watching it, I'm like hyped for the, this sequel. That's awesome. Um, yeah, I mean, I I really enjoyed it. And Katie has a big connection to Dune because of um, her father really enjoyed Dune growing up. So she was something really looking forward to it. So it's one of those things like we were always in the stores and she would always see the book. And like she's like, should I get the book? So like she wants to read it before the movie comes out. And so it's always been on our conversation or, or on our heads for like two years now. And so I've I've been really looking forward to it because I mean probably for about four or five years now, it, when any when anybody asks me hey, who's your favorite directors, and I give my top five, and Denny has always been in my top five since I watched Sicario and Prisoners, and then he come in and he did um, Blade Runner twenty forty nine, and he's also done Arrival, and to me he's like to. I think of him as like a Chris Nolan or a Spielberg in his prime. And he's like someone who comes in and he just doesn't make a bad movie. And even enemy with Jake Gyllenhaal is really good. I think it's on Netflix. You can check that one out. It's a, that's a really good movie too. And so I was really excited for this just, just from Blade Runner alone. And of course you got Hans Zimmer and you're right. You have the stellar cast. And I think that's one thing. It kind of reminds me of Superman, the movie a little bit. I don't know mm. uh, Timothy Sh- uh, Chalamet. I don't know him too much. And if, I know he's been in a few things, but he's not like yeah. as big as an Oscar Isaac or a Javier Bardem. But it reminds me of Superman the movie and that you have Christopher Reeve is unknown. You know, he's been maybe a couple things, but he's not someone you maybe would cast as Superman in a Superman movie back then. But then you sure. have Gene Hackman and you have all these other characters and you know you have Marlon Brando as Dorel surrounding this principal character here you have Javier Bardem Oscar Isaac Josh mm. Brolin i mean and you have um what's her name mm. Rebecca it ain't Rebecca Hall um i'm trying to think what's the his mom's name that's Rebecca Ferguson you have her in it you have, yeah. again you have Dave Bautista Stellan Skarsgård and then you have Zendaya which i'm not actually a huge Zendaya fan but you have all these people in there and it's a, it's a stacked cast and i think you're right even though you have when you ha- cast these huge actors there's this implication to think oh these people are going to be in the entire franchise and yeah. then oh and jason moa but then when these people don't make it you're like whoa like they can't yeah. hear like aquaman come here for that yeah yeah and there is no, a few things now there's a few caveats there because i think some of these characters may return that did die from what i, I hear i think so Oh yeah. well, I think that's possible. Um, yes, just I just would I wouldn't be surprised if that if that's the way the narrative goes. Um, yes, 
uh, to be fair to Timothy Chalamet, he has been in a lot of like, okay. uh, I mean, he was in Lady Bird. He was, I think he has a yeah. main role in Lady Bird. He was in Call Me By Your Name. I think yeah, he had one the- of the key roles in that. Um, he was actually the younger version of Tom in Interstellar. He was uh, Matthew, sure. Matthew McConaughey. You know, like, yeah, he's, but it's, he's, it's different, but he's been though. in critically acclaimed stuff. Yes, he's not a and blockbuster I'm not anything- name. But yeah. he is like people are kind of saying he could be like a like a a superstar like in cinema for the next like yeah. you know fifty yeah. years or something because he's like what twenty or something like crazy yeah I'm not yeah he's twenty five I'm not trying to take anything away from him I'm just saying like when you have a Josh Brolin who's Thanos and oh sure Josh yeah, Brolin yeah, yeah. you have Jason Momoa who's Aquaman I know. love Josh Brolin in this I thought he oh, was awesome. perfectly cast for that kind of role you know yeah. what I mean like this kind of general like you know, uh, you know, just hard, hard nose, kind of like gruff, brutal, but tough and yeah. like, you know, demanding. I loved him in that role. I will say Jason Momoa. I like Jason Momoa, but sometimes his delivery just doesn't feel cinematic to me, if that makes sense. Like it just maybe I don't know. Sometimes just the way he delivers lines, it feels too casual for like how everyone else is speaking, because like this movie is very eloquent and poetic, like people like lines feel like shakespearean you know almost at times like it just is sometimes there's prophecy lines there's these like repeated like you know fear is the mind killer i think is just a really cool phrase that's you know repeated over and over like there's just these things that um feel mystical and kind of fantasy like in the sci-fi sure. you know what i mean like that if you took the sci-fi setting and put this in fantasy all of these would still feel at home um and yeah, yeah i push I, back a little i think momoa i think it i think outside of aquaman he's actually pretty good i mean i really like him in c i like mm-hmm. him in this i think he's i think aquaman i did is i do so like cheesy. him i thought you yeah know, I no just, it for sure is um yeah. but yeah i mean i agree like the the big cast it was just like i mean i again i want to highlight oscar isaac i thought he was really good and rebecca ferguson was lady jessica i think you were talking yes. about earlier yeah she was fantastic and honestly I was I kind of her. expecting her to die towards the end because yeah. like everyone else did, you know what I mean? And I guess she almost does kind of twice. Yeah. Um, and, but yeah, I mean, I thought um, Timothy Chalamet, let's just, his performance in this was, I thought fantastic. I, I thought yeah. he was great. I really connected with like his, I feel like they did a really good job of putting us in his perspective of, um, you know, there's definitely some like, the way they did the visions and just kind of cut them in at times yeah where you know like what uh like he's just, like they're just walking in the desert and i guess they set that up because like we know the the spice makes him hallucinate and makes him see vision so if he's just walking around in it i guess he's like probably in and out of hallucinations at all times right. um but there was some really interesting i really enjoyed how they did that it felt very uh non-linear in a cool way um, and even the way that like he had that vision of the guy that he killed at the end. Yeah. Like helping, like training of help, him though. of training him. Right. Like, yeah. And it's like, okay, well, is that him seeing the future or was he like seeing through someone else's eyes somehow? Or like, was he seeing Zendaya's yeah. perspective? I don't know. Like, it's just, there, there's See, just I'm... so many mystical things that are like, I, I we're, it's kind of still a mystery why and how and what you know obviously he's this kind of messiah character you know and so yeah. we have the and, and like they I, you know they, they have those characters that are like repeating prophecy when they meet him like he will know our ways as if he was born here you know that when he yeah. knows how to do his shoes on the suit or whatever it is um yeah. but yeah i mean i think there's still it feels mysterious kind of to me still and kind of uh mystical like i said in an intriguing way that i'm that i think that's part of my hype for the sequel too is to kind of see that expanded on yeah no i i just real quick i think the visions are him seeing possible futures Mm -hmm. i I, like things that could come to pass or like variations like multiversal kind of things sure um and i think i think it's that and it's it it is it's very interesting um Mm -hmm. I, I think I will say this. I think my my big problem with the movie, and I think it's a problem that a lot of people had, is and it's not a huge problem, 
it's just that it does feel like it's half a movie because it's half a book and yeah i love the world i love the the world building and that kind of stuff and i'm really happy we're getting a sequel that was really weird Warner brothers if you're listening that you waited this long to announce it um way to show i feel like they were just doing director. that they're probably just doing that for like the media cycles or something you know what i mean it was probably just like pr decision yeah like, well let's let people like let's let people let's get a hashtag you know campaign start or something or that we feel like we're we're listening to the audience even though we were totally going to do this all the time. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I thought that was poor, poorly done. I mean, it says um, part one in the beginning of the movie. Like, It does. I would assume that anyone that isn't even like kind of doesn't follow movie and like what's being announced, like automatically assumes there's going to be a sequel. We're like, okay, yeah. well, there's a sequel coming. You know what I mean? So it, it kind of felt inevitable. I, I would love a whenever they both come out on blu-ray or whatever a five hour super cut yeah like you can't yeah, even tell it great. where it ends like i i have to pause it to take a break for a second yeah and i will say like even just like for a final shot like it was like kind of a very uh, mm, what's the word um uh, well it felt like ordinary? there was another scene coming yeah yeah it just felt <laughs> like okay this is just people walking in the desert and then it was over and yeah. like the music was like swelling and stuff, but I kind of like imagine we get some like giant wide, sure. you know, pan, you know, like like a wide shot at the plan. I don't know something that's kind of like your that feels like a, a an exterior, you know, something that just felt like a, a a good moment to end on, a good image. And it was just kind of like I mean, it, it was a nice shot. No, 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 I mean, every shot in this feels very designed and purposeful sure. and you know, really, really the, the details are paid attention in this movie. And I think that that adds to that kind of auteur-esque feel to it, to me of like, this is like a filmmaker's film like, movie yeah. in a lot of ways, where it's like, there's so much to appreciate about the craft of what we're, we're seeing. And like, I think for us, there's probably a lot of added just things to enjoy or kind of, you know, at, at a meta level. And yes, I guess we're pulling out of the movie a little bit in our heads when we're doing that, but um, I, I think there is just so much craft on display here that it just, and it just, it is so consistent. I think just from the beginning to the end, the tone, the, it just, everything about it just felt so, like I said, purposeful. Um, yeah, no, I mean, I think I, one thing I think is going to happen. Absolutely. And I, I could be wrong. I think part two, when it starts, it's probably that same shot and it will just like continue. Yeah. Like, I really think that I, it, I think he purposely did that to make you be like, okay, this isn't the end. Like this is they just, haven't, they yeah. haven't shot it yet. Right. Well, no, but that's easy. Okay. I mean, that's an easy thing to do. Yeah. And um, especially if it's pre-planned when the, when you shoot the first one. And I think sure. it is obviously, I mean, he's, he seems very passionate about it. And he seems like, he seems like the best director to do this and to kind of yes. piggyback off the cinematography. It's a beautiful film. And I think that what you're saying is it's got the, it's, he is so purposeful with like his mise-en-scene, like yes. in terms of set design and, you know, everything means something and the clothing yeah, like and the patterns everything. in the shots and the backgrounds, you know, leading lines, like, you know, all of that is present and on display. Like you could really yeah. teach with this movie, a lot of like, uh, like uh, pre-visualization type stuff or like, yeah, how do sure. you, you know what I mean? How are you designing your your sets to be cinematic for your shot? You know, it's just, yeah, I agree. Well, all those things come together. And I think what really makes Dune, it's lucky, not lucky enough maybe, but it's, it come out in 65. So there's been ample time to like basically mm. rip things off. And, and some things have, yeah. but I think even with all this time between the book and now, when the, when the movie has come out, it has, it, it makes us, uh, uh, it has a, a flag in the ground sort of thing. Like, Hey, we're distinct from everything else. Like the, I love the technology, like for this yes. world. And I, I, I love the idea of the shields and like yes. something slow has to go through like that kind of mythology that's yes. simple, but different. And yes. I love the idea, like the myth, the mysticism stuff is kind of tricky. And I think that I, I would like to know more. And like, you know, if it kind of feels almost a little too like, 
when people see him, they're like automatically like, oh, you're the one. Like it's a little too much. So um, I would almost sure. like it when someone says, hey, he's the one. They're like, he's the one. I'd rather that first happen than them be like, he's the one automatically. To be yeah. fair, at the end when they like were going to kill his mom. Sure. They were like, he's not the one. I mean, even Zendaya is like, I don't think you're the one, basically. Yeah. Like, when she hands him his knife. So like the important people don't think it. I guess like it, I guess I, I, I give it credit because like, okay, these are like the leaders, the people in charge versus the like kind of the masses. Um so I will say that that to me makes a little bit of sense. Um yeah, I know, I know. It's just there's something about it a few times whenever they're kind of talking or whatever, it's like, huh, that was kind of fast. But sure. But I I still love the atmosphere. I love the idea and like the clans and the the tribalism of the like different families. I love the names like House Atreides, um, Arrakis, yeah. um, yes. Harkonnen. I love Bautista and him just being this evil looking b- badass. And you got to give it to S- Stellan Skarsgård. He is one of the like just by presence and visuals alone, one of the best villains ever. <laughs> it's great. No, he looks yeah. just so grotesque. And then he does that really creepy like floating thing. Oh man. And it looks like his legs are like like 10 feet long or yeah. something. It looks really weird. It's like very creepy and like like it feels like a like a horror movie effect. Yeah. In the middle of this, you know, these scenes and how they shoot it, it's kind of happening in the background and then floating across your per- like you're never getting a good look at it. You know what I mean? Right. Which makes it creepier. Um, well, that's another I, example of, maybe that was in the book, but there's got to have been tons of people over the last 60 years saying, we should have a guy that floats in the air. and But they managed to do that and make it look cool and creepy and scary. And I think that's, it, it says a lot about the team behind the movie. And I, I think that's really impressive. I agree. Yeah, I, I and I, I agree with your, you know, your kind of, big point there that it feels so unique you know i love the yeah. dragonfly um vehicles yeah they're kind of like x-wings really cool. a little right they do they uh, they they do but they also have that distinct dragon i mean they're, I mean, they're obviously I mean, they're, dragonflies right um uh, yeah of course way, but, but they have a little bit of x-wing in the sure show. sure i agree yeah i love like even just like the the spice crawler things and and the, the ships that come pick them up I love yeah. the worms that are ba- I feel like the worms are just basically like moving sarlacc pits, basically, even in how they like yeah. come up. But it's also like I think I think they felt they felt menacing. They felt like obviously dangerous. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like um I like the worms. I thought I and I honestly I felt like, you know, selling Skarsgard was a scarier thing than them. You know, they just kind of felt like yeah. nature in a way, I guess, that's just ferocious. Um but yeah, it's it feels so unique. You know, and I will say, you know, maybe some of the, um, obviously, like if you if you back out, right, like he's very much, you know, a chosen one, right? Like that like we've right. seen the chosen one stories over and over and over. I mean, Star Wars is that story, um, etc. Um, but I do love kind of like like the um. The set dressing, I guess, around that, like the, the Bene Gesserit, like that that like priestess uh place and the and the woman that with the box, you know, and he, when he mm-hmm. puts his hand in the box and stuff. Great sequence. Um Yes. And I just love I love how like they feel like this weird almost third party, you know, if we're talking about like the Emperor and these different houses and stuff like this. Um I you know you know I the one thing that was I guess maybe felt a little rushed to me I guess was um Paul's like w- desire to be the emperor you know when they're having that con- like uh, they've escaped the city and they meet with that lady who's like I guess like the emperor's like witness or something I guess I couldn't remember what exactly her role but she like doesn't Yeah. She's supposed to be neutral but she really isn't I don't know that was kind of confusing. Um but when he's like, we have to escape to tell people so I can be the emperor. And right. and like, what could I do? And I'm like, whoa, okay, this feels a little like, you, you know, you went from like uh, timid, I guess, you know, uh, I don't know what my powers are. I don't know how to use them to I'm going to be the emperor in like, you know, maybe 45 minutes. Um, <laughs> yeah. you, you know, and yeah, uh, yeah. 
I, I guess like I mean it, he he had to like grow a lot when they escaped the city or whatever. Um, but I do want to highlight that sequence. I thought the attack was just that was one of those moments where like man, I wish I'm in the theater right now. Right. right? Just like the the and I, and I I have like a decent sound bar and you know a sub and so like even just the thud of some of those like explosions and like I loved how brutal that whole sequence was like just people die like character again that's like when josh brolin dies right like um jason momoa almost dies oscar isaac dies like and then you know a bunch of other people josh brolin die uh you know i don't think we do i I don't think we do so maybe that's one of those guys that could definitely come back yeah i bet he'll be back Um, for sure i think the only one that won't be back is oscar isaac no he's he seems i mean he like did the whole thing pretty dead thing yeah he seems pretty gone Um, yeah and Spoilers, I love that. By the way. Yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> I love that scene that happened that too, where he's like, they've like stripped him naked and he's like sitting across this giant table. It felt very like, it felt very like Christy. Like, like, I don't know why it felt like almost like the crucifixion of Christ for like, it had these like religious tones to it in that way. Yeah. Um, now, like just I do want to bring up something. And this is like a, it's a, it's a nitpick of mine. The, the, the universe does feel kind of small to me right now and like i know that there's a a universe holy war coming but for for how like they're advanced and it it seems like they've taken away some technology because of the um, limitations it possibly provided in generations past so they're kind of stripped themselves and they're more tribal kind of thing um to 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 not destroy themselves i guess which there's another theme there but it feels like it's a little almost too small for me a little bit like i don't see other planets or even other tribes it seems like i'm just with these few that are and fighting each other and i wonder if the next movie will give us enough time to really feel how big the universe is and maybe it is only these few houses but it feels like Mm. these are like the two of the most powerful houses so there's got to be a lot of houses that aren't powerful and a lot of different looking planets and different you know what i'm saying yeah, well, and they do make mention of those when they're like, we can, u- kind of, we can yeah. unite the houses against the emperor. Yeah, um, and I get that. I mean, we we do we do visit four planets in the movie. Uh, we visit the one that um, the Atreides are first on. We visit the um, what are the bad guys called again? I'm blanking on their names. Harkonnens, Harkonnens. home planet. Yeah. We visit uh, the emperor's, like I guess, base planet or whatever when they're talking to like that emperor guard guys or whatever, and then of course um, Arrakis, right? Um, was Arrakis the planet they were on at first? Um, the Ra- Arrakis is uh, is the spice planet. Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. Yeah, I I want yeah. I I kept wanting to call it Dune, but I guess that's like a nickname yeah. for it or something. <laughs> Um, yeah what does what does dune mean yeah i didn't think about that (laughs) uh, um i feel like someone called like mint like calls it dune in kind of like a moniker type way um right but yeah no i do agree i think okay so i i did start reading the book and i read kind of up to when they leave to go to arrakis um and kind of when they first arrive and start setting up, like before shit goes down. And uh, I think I will keep reading. Honestly, the movie, I, I had not, I am, I hadn't gotten bored of it. I just wasn't like gripping me as much because it just, it just, it's, it's a, like the movie, kind of a slow burn, you know what I mean? Sure. And, and kind of takes a lot of time doing, setting up this world building, which I love. I love this movie is so world building. You know, it does so much kind of exposition work while it's, setting all this you know continuing the plot and stuff yeah um but yeah i kind of i have no idea what's going to happen next though i i feel like kind of i, I and i kind of like that it almost makes me want to wait for the next movie before i finish the book just to yeah be more surprised but um that's how i feel yeah, about it I, mean, I, I don't know part of me wants to know other part of me wants to like wait and just experience it cinematically because i just enjoy that medium so much sure. but but it is a long, it's, it's like hard. multiple years away and who knows it could be delayed. I mean, it could be 2024, honestly, before we get this. Movie, it I could be, be, I don't think it will be delayed, but it could be delayed. Yeah. I just, yeah. Anyway, they can't, so, they can't wait too long. Like financially, they can't wait too long to uh, have a part two be really far away. 
Yeah, I, I agree. And honestly, you'd lose a lot of like people just forget Mom- about it probably, you know. If it yeah, exactly. Cool. And I think there's even, and don't quote me, but there is um like a HBO Max. Uh, yeah, HBO Max, it's called The Sisterhood, Doing the Sisterhood. So I think it, it follows the, I think what you're saying, Benet Jesseret, and it serves as the prequel to the film. Oh really? So we're gonna start kind of. I really coming, think that's coming out soon. Um, it the, says that it was uh, revealed in 2019, and the showrunner was hired in July of this year. So it really feels like we'll probably get that in between this and the next movie. Sure, sure. And yeah, um, I, sense. I can see this as like because you know every company wants the next big franchise. I yes. really think they'll want this in like either to continue this, and continue in some form. Yeah, either from like HBO it. Max shows or yeah. something. I, and I think there's more than two, two books in it. There's like a lot of books. I think there's like seven or eight books. And I think there's five yeah. by Frank Herbert. And then his son and another guy continue to write them as they go. And apparently even Denny has said this. Denny has said, yeah, I may just want to adapt the second one because after that, it starts getting like really weird. Like almost yeah, hard if- to follow. Like I almost though I w- I wonder if they'll try to bring someone else in to, to try to to try and adapt it. You know, well, I mean, if it's if it's popular enough, then of course. Or or but maybe also just they're not take it in their own cinematic direction. That's what I would prefer because I don't know if I don't. From what I everything I gather is like after Dune and maybe Dune Two, it starts really kind of like going downhill story wise. You know, like book wise. Yeah, there's a lot of. I mean. I think the most recent ones there's a, there's one coming out in 2022 by the, his son. Yeah, exactly. It's like they're still coming out. Yeah, and um and now Tradis's wow. story, I think it it completes for the most part around book 3 or so. Book 3 or 4, I could be wrong. Sure. But uh you know, I think he said that he he does want to do Dune Messiah next and I don't know if it's going to be two books or or two movies or one movie. The impression is one movie the way he talks yeah I, i'm gonna assume it's dune dune messiah and well there's children of dune is the third book i don't know yeah. if he'll do that one um yeah yeah i mean it does feel like i mean this 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 feels like it could be you know obviously a, an ip they iterate on um you know, I don't see like they can't. I don't feel like they can keep up the quality level of this movie just, and the next one, though. I like, just spoiled is... the ending to Dune Messiah <laughs> for yourself. So, yep, just by reading the first line of this one thing. Damn. All righty. Well, that's how that's how it goes. <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. Um, yep. yep. I don't know. Like, I yeah, I, I def. It definitely feels like they could continue it. I hope. You know, they're, they're, Dennis is, Denny is setting such a high level of quality at the start. You know what I mean? And then, yeah. I mean, these movies are so expensive. What? How much was Dune to make? Like, hundred sixty-five million. Yeah, I mean, and to be fair, I mean that's only like half of like one of those pirates movies that was made, or like not right. even. Uh, that actually does sound a little cheap, almost to me. Uh, it's for. I mean, I don't. It's not. This. It's not cheap for what kind of movie it is. And if any other time, like if, if we were in like normal blockbuster time and yeah. it made only 300 million, they would, we would not be getting a sequel. Um, sure. Sure. Yeah. We would not be getting I mean, a sequel. It, it's made 300 million so far. 303 million. Yeah. Is that worldwide? worldwide? That's worldwide. Okay. That's not counting HBO max, whatever. Um, yeah. But I don't know if they are counting that. No, well, no, I'm saying factoring not, it in. I'm saying it's not counting like subscri- subscribers or watch time on HBO Max. Sure. Just, just, just box office, it's made three, which is which still is good for what a movie that's sci-fi that has no pre-established property in terms of like, you know, I mean, Dune's a kind of hard one to sell, you know, in general. Yeah, sure. No, I yeah. completely agree. Yeah. No, I, I, I'm looking forward to it. Um, is there anything that you wish? before we hop off here anything that you wish you know you wish you got more of that you might get in the sequel the sequel um i I guess you know not really i mean i feel like i got enough to understand what was going on i mean um and and i think it's also kind of like because these 
tropes are kind of existent. It's like, okay, yeah, he's getting visions because he is the one, you know, or whatever the Bene Gesserit lady was talking about. Yeah. And he's also the one that these tribals are, you know, had this prophecy of. Um, and that's why he's having visions and that's why he has powers and knows the way of the voice. <coughs> um, which that was cool too. I really like the voice kind of mechanic or how they, how they, uh, the kind of audio and visual effects they use for that. Yeah. Um, but no, I mean, I, I kind of just, I want more as in the next movie. <laughs> that's what I want for yeah. of. I mean, I, I'm kind of on board. So, Me too. um, Me I just too. want, I want to, I want to know what happens next. Yeah. Well, I would. I kind of wish Travis was here because he seemed like he was really into it. Maybe it's because he sure. saw it in theaters where we didn't. I know. I really do think that yeah. this kind of movie, like, I, I do feel that it would make an impact. I'll just say, like, if you are comfortable with it and have the opportunity to, I would say see it in the theater, uh, yeah. even if you've already seen it on your TV. I just think, I, I, I feel like I could just taste like a, a just a little bit of what this would be like in the theater, just watching it at home. Yeah. Uh, and it was just kind of like, oh man, this would just be kind of like one of those just. Remi- it's like, like I remember watching Avatar in theaters in IMAX, like when that came out in like I guess two thousand nine or ten. Yeah. Um, and that was like, oh wow, like that was a movie you saw in theater and like made an impact even to see an IMAX, right? Because yeah. it's just so visually stunning. And I feel like this movie is the same way. Um. And it's not visually in like a CGI way as much as it's visually in like like a cinematic way, I guess maybe or like, like a, an epicness uh, to it. Yes, yeah, this feels like an epic. It really yeah. does. Like it feels, yes, it, it feels like a cinematic no. epic. And that, I, I agree. Don't get those I, that much anymore. No, really I don't. really wanted to see it in theaters, but just fate had had it where I I wouldn't, and I'd totally plan on seeing it. I did see Eternals in the IMAX last night, which we'll review later, and. Yes. I don't. I normally don't go to the IMAX because in our in where we live, the theater is it's a good screen, but the seats aren't as comfortable as like the rave. Yeah. And but we saw it at the IMAX last night, and it also like I had I wasn't really I mean it looked, I knew it looked pretty in the trailers, but seeing it in IMAX, sure. I was like, holy fuck, this looks amazing. Like the Eternals does look yeah. amazing. Yeah. And I, and I'll say I do know about that movie that they did a lot of um, shooting on location. It versus did. a CGI, you can tell. you know, set, and you can I tell. Bet. I even from the trailers, I feel like you can tell. There's just a, yeah. There's it, it. Really does like I know like, CGI has come a long way, obviously, but there's not. There's just something you can't quite replicate about the actors actually standing on the grass and like you know the way that light is hitting the sun is hitting things and just like yeah, it, it does. It, it's cool. No, it makes a big difference. Well, Daniel, how can our listeners write into us? Listeners, you can write into us at bit.ly slash two for one mail. Let us know what you thought of Dune. Is there anything we missed? I mean, I, I this also feels like a movie that has a lot of rewatchableness to it because I feel like yeah. you're going to pick up on a lot more. Uh, you know, so is there, I mean, I feel like I followed the plot pretty well, but I feel like also like uh, if you read the book, you're probably picking up on a lot more than I am uh, of little things. So is there something we missed? Is there something cool that you want to highlight? Um, did you love it? Did you hate it? Let us know, bit.ly slash 241mail. And if you can't hit up our bit.ly, you can always leave a comment in the comment section below. Again, youtube.com slash 241studios, the best place to consume the content. And if you want more 241, you can go always go to 241studios.com. And again, we're sponsored by Kapow, not Kablam, Kapow Comics. <laughs> good, good. I'm yeah. sure they're listening every week to, yeah, to quality check. I'm sure uh, they are. Before they send the check. And so, uh, so, yeah, they've yet to actually send the check though. I, I, I want to follow yeah. up on that because it's been like six months and they've yet to send one. I don't, I don't yeah. know what maybe there's a mail issue. <laughs> Just make sure they have the yeah. right. We probably have a P, like yeah. they're probably like filling up someone else's PO box with like, yeah, it's five thousand dollar checks. Yeah. Oh man, yeah. Um, that'd be incredible. I, w- I would like makes my heart thinking that that could be a possibility. Um, <laughs> but uh, anyway, my name is Donovan Thompson. I'm Daniel Wingfield. And we have spoken.